All right, let's make this happen. Yesterday we uh, we built our own level and played all around with the level editor and learned a whole bunch of stuff with that and and sprites and auto spriting and everything and auto auto tile laying and everything. Today we're gonna do animation, which is super exciting. Um, animation is a really important thing. It's uh, it, and it's it's calling back to one of the very very first um uh very first uh, things that I said I really wanted to do to go back to the very first stream of us building stuff at Game Maker, um, there was uh, a lot of discussion around, man, I wish I could like put some Bezier curves on this to smooth it out a little bit. And that's what we're going to be getting into today, which is wonderful. So without further ado, let's dive in, because we've only got two hours, and we got to go. When you add an object. Hey, Ryan Reynolds here with a Ryan, what are you doing here? Greg, when you add an object in your game, it stays there unless you program it to move using GML. But there is an easy way to visually animate an object and give it a looping animation or a one-time animation that moves whenever you want. The sequence editor in Game Maker is where you animate your sprites, objects, and even sounds and then place the animation in a room or play it in game at any time. The Windy Woods template in Game Maker has a coin pickup, which has a nice spinning animation, but it doesn't actually move within the game. So let's use the sequence editor to give it an idle animation and a special animation that plays when the coin is collected. Create a new project using the Windy Woods template or use one of your own projects. From the asset browser, create a new sequence assets and name this seq underscore coin. The sequence editor will open on the left. Now from your list of objects, under environment and then items, select obj coin. This is the in-game coin object that the player can collect. Drag it and then drop it into your sequence. In the canvas, move it and make sure it's in the center of the sequence. Now in the dope sheet here, you can see the whole length of the sequence. This is the coin object that you just added, and it has its own track. This track doesn't last for the whole sequence though, so let's right click on the asset key here, and select stretch asset key. Now the track lasts throughout the whole sequence. Now the sequence itself plays for 60 frames, which is a bit excessive. Okay, so... So we could say this is only here for this long and then it'll disappear. And then we can do stretch asset key and that'll move it all the way that full second. Got it. That's it for my coin animation. And, and, and I just want to double check. This is just the animation for just the regular sprite, right? It's not. Huh? What? Now why would that be? Uh, so I was expecting, or sequences here, I was expecting this coin sprite to, oops, have this as its animation uh, in the sprite, but it's not. There's no animation on that sprite. Oh, wait, hold on, but that's in Sprite HUD coins, not in Object Coin. And that's Sprite HUD coins, not Sprite Coin. There we go, got it. Okay. So it makes one full revolution, or rather, one, 180 degrees in 30 frames, about. So it'll move. 360 degrees, turn all the way around every second. Okay, got it. And then object coin, I just want to see, we had this get random number. Assign a random number between zero and image number minus one, the last frame to the image index. So the animation starts at a random frame. Image index. Image index meaning, um, 
the uh oh dear this i'm assuming each frame is an image index so current frame meaning uh image index i wish that used the same word or or had some way to reference each other create a, a universal language but okay um so the animation starts at random frame so we're taking the image number a number between zero and image number i don't know what image number is is image number a image number just read only variable it can be used to get the number of sub images in a sprite oh if you need the number of sub images sub images for a sprite other than the one assigned to the instance you should use sprite get number is not the when there is for example one sub image this variable would return one but the image index that sub image zero uh sure because of the at base zero so at frame zero you have one frame. Uh, okay, so it sounds like image number is a variable in Game Maker that lists uh, how many frames are in that sprite. So this is saying between zero and the end of the animation for this sprite, minus one. I don't know why we're doing minus one. But that's there. We'll figure that out another time. Um, so pick a random number between zero and the end, minus one. And then start there is, is all that's saying. Got it. Okay, let's go back for a tutorial. Yours may be different. So based on my animation, I'll set the length of the sequence to 54 frames, so the coin animation loops perfectly. We do want the sequence Be because of the the coin animation is 27 frames. Wants to loop, which doesn't happen by default. So click here to enable looping. Now to animate anything in a sequence, you use keyframes. You add a keyframe at any point of time on your track. And a keyframe can have its own position, rotation, or some other property. Say you added three keyframes to the coin track with different positions, then the coin would animate between those positions as the sequence played. Now let's animate our coin by changing its position using keyframes. Expand your coin track here and select the position parameter. If you don't have one, you can add it from here. In the dope sheet, take your playhead to the first frame. If you don't already have a keyframe here, then click on this button to create one. Then what? That's how you add a keyframe? Who's gonna think to do that? Goodness. All right, and then at twenty-seven, do another one, and at fifty-four. So now we've got those three keyframes. If you're unfamiliar with keyframe animation, it's basically just saying. This point for keyframe, I want it to look like this. And then at this point, I want it to look like this. And then the computer will interpolate and figure out what are all the in between states to incrementally and linearly get to that state. So it'll say, okay, you have moved it up or up 10 frames or 10 pixels over 10 frames. I will just move it up one every frame until we hit that point. And that's how keyframe animation works. So it looks like we're going to, at this middle keyframe, uh, we are going to lift it. Let's say 20, 20 pixels. So now, oh, it added another keyframe. It did that automatically. Will it just add keyframes wherever the scrubber is? Yes, it will. Okay, well, that's good to know. So let's go ahead and lift this up again. Uh, let's go to 20 again. And then, oh, interesting. And it's not keeping the old one. In fact, I don't know if I see the old keyframes anymore. That's strange. 
Set this set set this back down to zero. And then you start at zero. And then here you need to be 20. Negative 20. And then okay, what is happening? <laughs> Why are my keyframes disappearing? Do I need to like Jump to next keyframe. Yeah, it's like completely obliterating my keyframes. I'm not going to have to add a different track for every keyframe, right? I mean, that would be crazy pants. Let's see what the tutorial does, I guess. You take your playhead to the middle of the sequence. For me, that's frame 27. Add a keyframe here. And then finally add another keyframe at the very end of your sequence. You can now give each one of these keyframes a different position, rotation, or even scale. And it will animate between these keyframes as the sequence plays. For this animation, we want the first and last keyframes to stay where they are and we'll only modify the position in the middle keyframe. So take your playhead to the middle keyframe and select that keyframe. In the canvas, select your coin track and then- What? What? Now it's working? Why? <laughs> I mean, I'm happy about that, but why all of a sudden is this functioning? Lovely. Okay, great. I did it. I, I, I must have just been pushing buttons in the wrong order, or something. Then use this red arrow to move it up. Now, play the animation, and you can see that the coin moves up and down, and it already looks much more alive. So you've just created your first animation, but the movement here is very robotic, as the coin moves up and down in a very linear fashion. Let's make it a bit smoother using curves. Select the position parameter, click here to go into curve mode. This. this parameter doesn't use a curve, it uses regular keyframes. So let's convert it into a curve Ooh. by clicking here. You now have a curve for this track that you can see here, and it has two channels, X and Y. Because we are only moving the coin vertically, select the Y track, click here to open the curve library, and change its type from linear Ah, uh, beautiful. I was I was trying to figure out like there's like they've got to have presets like ease in, ease out, balance, all that sort of stuff, right? Um, okay. So I did unfortunately miss uh, how we got to that library. Here we go. We're gonna go to Bezier and K. Here we go. Right on. Um. Very cool. Very cool. Good. This is exactly what I was hoping for. Um, we have ease of this in and out. Yeah, okay. Um, if we want ease in and out, Let's see what he does. So basically, what that means is that it's going to be, um, it will kind of start slow, speed up, and then slow down a little bit. So it'll kind of go woo. So it's going to have a bit more of that sort of roller coastery feel to it. Whereas, like, ease in exclusively would be like it would, it would uh, come in really fast and then slow down. So it would like go up to the top really fast and kind of pause at the top and then uh, come back down really fast. Ooh, that might actually be what we want because we have this applying to the whole thing. My brain. My brain is moving. What are we? What? What is this gonna mean? Really? Did we really kill our keyframe when we did this? Uh. There. Okay. Yeah, so that's pausing at the top and bottom. What happens if we change it to just 
ease in. Now, why did that change something? Okay. Okay. It looks like we're only... See how it feels a little lopsided? It goes, whoa, whoa. And then, like, the, that first part, that first half, feels a little lopsided. So, oh dear. What did I do? Go back to the curves. Thank you. I mean, I do think you want ease and ease out. And I'm also learning this is not change curves. This is set curves. Now, why did that just reset everything? Oh, dear. Okay. We want Y. Do I have to, like... Oh dear. Okay. There we go. Select those three. Ease in out. Why are you doing this? Why does it keep deleting my animation? How bizarre. Video. Your curve will now be, well, more curvy than it was before, which results in smoother movement. And you can make it even smoother by selecting a point and extending its handle. I'll do the same for the rest of the points as well. Okay. Play your animation now, and the coin's movement will now appear much more natural. Let's place our new animating coin inside the game. Open RM level 1, which is the first level in this project. In the layers panel, let's add a new asset layer where you can place sequences directly. I'll rename this to sequences. Now from your asset browser, drag your SEQ coin sequence and place it in the room. I'll place three of them here. I'll also open the instances layer and delete the old coin instances. Run the game and you will now see your coins animating. And you can also collect them because they are just your same old coin objects which are just moving around because of the sequence. So now if there's any object in your game that you want to animate, just put it in a sequence, animate it, and then put that sequence in your level using an asset layer. Okay, so my, my confusion right now, if you are seeing my face, is because we're putting objects in a non-instance layer, which is a little confusing to me. Um, but I guess because it's a sequence and not an object, like this is cool. So yeah, I can't just put, this asset can only be applied to an instance layer and you do not currently have one selected. Do you want to create a new one? No. So. <laughs> we need so we can put the coins in here because they are a sequence not an asset at this point um so we hit play everything should function we should still see the coins tick up because it's a sequence which is inheriting the object properties but it is a different thing. This feels really weirdly, um, really weirdly uh, architected. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, so we're seeing the coin counter tick up. Um, they're jumping and bumping. They're not jumping and bumping because we're not in the right level. Oh well. Um, okay. Well, that's interesting. Uh, and, and the sequences, once again, that's how we're getting our main menu, it's how we're getting the pause menu, it's how we're getting the HUD uh, to update and everything. Kind of curious how that HUD works. Because we have this sequence game HUD, and it's drawing our hearts, background, and coins. But there's more to the HUD than this. Um... 
This object has an empty draw event, so it's not drawn in the room. Instead, it's drawn on the GUI layer through the draw GUI begin event. If the player instance does not exist, exit so it doesn't run. So this is like in the main menu. Don't be drawing this. But if we're in the game, draw the object. It's drawn on the draw GUI begin so it appears behind other HUD elements, which are drawn in draw GUI. Uh, which I assume would be HUD coins. Is this good? Yeah, it's just an exit. That's an empty draw event, so it's not drawn in the room. Instead, it's drawn on the draw GUI layer through the draw GUI. So I wonder how important that empty draw event is. Um, yeah, I guess I'm just curious about that. Why, why does that need to exist? So once again, if we're like in a main menu or in a pause or something, or no, it, it would keep it on the pause, but if we're in the main menu, or we have died, don't draw this. But if we are, if we're playing, then draw yourself, set your font, draw the value 54 pixels to the right of the coin. Okay, that makes sense. Let's check out hearts. Because there's also like empty hearts, um, which I'm not seeing anywhere. So once again, we have an empty draw, and then we have draw GUI. If instance exists, draw stacked sprites. Okay. Draw heart empty equal to your player's max hit points horizontally and stack them with no padding, no margins, no nothing. Just one after each other in a line. And then draw the hearts in the exact same order on the same position, but higher up in the layer order because it's coming next after the empty stuff. Draw the HP full. So this empty heart is always existing, but it may be covered up by the, uh, the full hearts. So that's interesting. Um, and I'm sure that there's a way you could also set it to programmatically determine how much like take the, the total health, total max, subtract the current, and then draw the current, and then draw empty after that. But that just seems like a lot more work when you can, at least in this instance, just have them stack on top of each other and obscure the empty ones, which is great. Uh, you'd have to do the programmatic way if you, uh, if you had for some reason an empty state that would not be obscured by the full state. Cool, that was an easy tutorial. I think we're kind of at the end here, maybe? No, it looks like we got a little bit more. Now here I've created a new animation of the coin flying away. Mm -hmm. This coin is only a sprite and not an object because we don't need any coin logic here. It uses the position, scale, and rotation parameters <laughs> with a curve for the position. This okay, hold on. Um, so what's happening when we collide with the coin? <laughs> um, where is that being stored? Collide with coin. So we create the coin collect effect object. Coin collect effect. Coin collect effect. What are you? So we're pulling from object parent. Oh, that's interesting. So we have an animation end, which is just destroy the instance. Interesting. Smart. So now you don't have to rebuild a destroy instance every single time. Um, so we are setting the blend mode to add. We're drawing ourself. We are then resetting it. So that's interesting. So right now, it seems like all that is happening when we pick up a coin is it should go semi-transparent and then disappear. Oh, duh, no, obviously, because the blend mode isn't applying to the coin, it's applying to the effect. So when we touch the coin, it spawns the sprite for the coin collection. And that is on an add layer instead of um, 
just being opaque, right? That's why it looks a little ghostly, a little ethereal there. That makes perfect sense. Right on. Okay. Um, and then we have Sprite Coin Collect Effect. Let's just check that out real quick. See how that's built. Sprite Coin Collect Effect. There you go. Whoop, that's exactly what we've been seeing. Now, I am curious why we have that blend mode there. Um, in fact, what we can do, we can disable that. And let's just observe what the difference is. What does that add, blend mode add do for us? Oh, wow. It's way less um, bright, less um, like it's glowing less. So I'm curious. Um, when do you do that programmatically? And when do you do that in the art asset? Because I'm sure that that could just be illustrated that way instead of needing to come in, set this blend mode and do all that sort of stuff. Maybe it's harder to do it in game makers like sprite editor, but like something like being in Photoshop or, or Illustrator would uh, be more more powerful. All right, so so we need to go to our um, sequence or our coin, and then I'm betting this is a new sequence, right? Settle down. Now here, I've created a new animation. I assume when he says I've created a new animation, he means I've created a new sequence. Let's go ahead and create a new sequence. This will be sequence, um, coin, pickup. And we'll put that in with our sequences. We'll drag our coin sprite on it because we don't actually want this to be interactable. This is just a visual. So we don't need any of the behavioral stuff. Like it would, it would break the game if you could pick up the coin and then while it's flying away, like continue to pick it up every frame, right? And then that would in turn spawn the animation more and more and more. And anyways, that would very much break things. We don't want the behavior. We just want the sprite. So, what he's doing is he's arcing it up and over a little bit and then decreasing the size. And that will give the illusion of it being thrown into the background, right? So, um, go ahead and go into our curves to start off with. Um, on position, um, This is where my knowledge of animation starts to break down a little bit. I'm not sure what the correct ratio is. Like, how how long do you want it to take to fly into the background versus how long should it stay in the background? I'm assuming spatial reasoning-wise, you would want it to move faster when it's closer to you because that's, that's how we'll perceive it as people. We'll perceive the closer stuff as moving faster and the further stuff as moving slower. So, so let's say, like, two-thirds of the animation um will be the moving up and then the last third will be the down and to the right so we're going to zoom out a little bit and i also don't know really how much this should be but we do know that we know that um we're moving at 20 pixels just on that Hover up and down so it should probably be more than that so let's go with 30 double the height seems like that's going to shoot it way far up and is, is going to be kind of unreasonable let's go for 30 30 up oops okay uh so let's set you to zero 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 and then at 40 you can be at um, 30? No, no, sorry. We'll come back to that. Uh, negative 30, right? Oh, geez. Negative 30, and then height will be 
Um, now let's say 10, or not high, horizontal. Horizontal will be at 10, vertical will be at negative 30. Yeah, so what is that giving us? Moving it up. So this is not doing what we wanted to. Um, and then step three should be like um, Oh, does horizontal matter since we're only on the x on the y axis right now? That's strange. Why is there a horizontal property on the y axis? What is h? Am I misreading h? Um, sequence. What is the sequence? This might not be the best place to be looking at. Um, curve? Animation curve? Are you gonna... Okay. Animation curve editor? This is getting closer. Okay, here we go, here we go. So that's editing the curve itself, but not the animation. Dang it. We were so close. Um, but for keyframe. I don't know, sequences? Yeah. Um, I don't think we want to get into keyframe struct. Using animation curves? This is looking closer. Two channels, X and Y, position. Good for X. There's probably not going to be a ton of X's on here. Okay, there were a lot of X's, and none of them were the X that we wanted. Panel range? Panel editor? Wow, that's a funky animation curve. Holy cow. Um... Oh, man. With the dope sheet. Includes adding or removing points, changing their position, changing the curve type, applying presets and renaming channels. I mean, so we can't apply anything. Oh, okay. It's automatically selected it for us. Good. Um, so we're going to want ease out on the animation. Yeah. Okay, so then by this point, you need to be over, say, that much? And then we're gonna add scale by the time you're here, revert to curve, apply preset, it's gonna be an ease out, and we're gonna set you to what, a third? Still not sure what that 0.33, or what that H value is in the, Yeah, what is H and V? Because changing this doesn't seem to do anything for me. 
H has got to be like sequence number or something. Like it, it, it's got to be like sequence number and value. I must be misreading this somehow. Okay. So. Whoa. <laughs> All right. So I think we definitely need to move the Y up higher. Um. Yeah, let's move that up there. Um, and then we're gonna move the X a little bit less over. Um, slide it into like that. Repeat. I'm not convinced that's really okay, good, but let's keep going here. Um, and then scale again. We'll keep on shrinking this down to zero, I guess. So we just want it to disappear, right? Okay. Definitely feeling funky. This position stuff is. Can I can I control A? No, I can't. So can we, can I just do, can I select all of, no. Okay. Select all these, ease out. Select all these, ease out. That's not feeling very good. It's missing that like initial jump. Should have like a, a feeling of a jump up and then quickly fade away. So maybe, maybe this is even taking too long. I don't know, let me go, let me go. Let me go back to tutorial. Let's see what he he's done. Off the coin, flying away. Yeah, nice that coin. feels way better. Oh, and he's even like rotating it. That see, that's nice. That's nice. Is only a sprite and not an object because we don't need any coin logic here. Yep. It uses the position, scale, and rotation parameters with a curve for the position. This should play when a coin is collected. So find an open D OBJ player object and here open its collision event with OBJ coin. In this event, let's add this to create a sequence in the game. It will create the new SEQ coin to create OBJ OBJ player object. Play when a coin is collected. A curve for the position. This should play when a coin is collected. A curve for the position and not an object and sequence player. Now here I've created a new animation of the Hold on, hold on. So this is what I'm looking for. I want to see that animation, because it looks like he's only playing that animation for like a third of a second, which would make a lot of sense to me based off of what we're seeing on ours, because it feels very slow, very drawn out. An asset layer. No. Okay, so yeah, this 24, at frame 24, it looks like it should be kind of cutting out here. Here, I've created a new animation. Yep, okay. So... Is there a way to just compress everything? Because that would be really nice. That's where like that H value would all of a sudden make sense. Like, can I set that to 0.5? And now it moves over? No. Um. That's really frustrating. There's got to be a way to like shrink this, right? They can shrink the time it will play for. Why can I not move this? Really annoying. I guess I can just copy the same curve and then set these guys to linear. There we go. And then we extend out 
full second. Okay. So scale now needs the same thing. So we have 24. Um, and you. So at this point, you need to be zero, right? Zero. And then two to three, just be linear. But then one to two needs to be as zero. Okay. Uh, yeah, see, that's the problem. It's kind of warping back into existence at the very end there. Um, can I, like, break this a little? Oops. Uh, there we go. So I'm holding in Alt while I click and drag. Okay, so what does that feel like now? So it feels like it, instead of like being tossed up and into the background, it feels like it's being kind of like shot into the background, right? Let's go to our position. Uh, oops. Grab our number one. We're gonna put a bezier on you. Why? Why can't I just put a bezier curve on one point? Um, he's out. For you and you and then for two i want you to be linear stop it <laughs> all right fine alt again it is there's more than one way to curve a bezier that's still slightly moving what is happening no. Okay. So it looks, it looks just fine. Okay. So position. So we're coming up, and then, uh, we need it to arc back down. So why is my arc? What if I just? I mean, can I just do that and kind of cheat the system a little? Yeah. Okay. So what? So what am I doing here? What is what is the effect of this? This is effectively changing the Bezier curve of the keyframe. So it's kind of telling it bounce past where you're supposed to go and then return at these speeds at every point along the way. You know what, it actually looks like it's adding a keyframe for me. Okay, so, so my mental model was wrong. It wasn't just editing the Bezier curve, it was also adding another keyframe. So this is like the visual Bezier curve editor, or rather the visual animation editor, and this is the by the numbers animation editor. Okay, that's the right conceptual model, okay. Okay, and then scale, um, at this point, I wish there was a way to like go to that frame. I think we can like go here and then move. Um, we really want uh, this to be a lot further down. And that's gonna create kind of our ease out feel. Yeah, that's feeling better. It's going a lot smaller at the beginning, and then when it kind of hits the top of that, it, it's still getting smaller into nothingness, but it's a lot slower. That's the way that it should feel. So let's go ahead and... Can I, like... Copy-paste? No? Can't duplicate? Okay, so, well, let's add rotation. Because I think that's a good call. Convert to curve. 
and um angle will kind of set to that and then by the time we're at 24 we'll set you to like that. let's see what that that gives us there's a tiny little pixel running around over there is that because of this guy? Um, whoa, what? Wait, what? What did I just do? Did I did I change something? Did this actually matter? <gasps> what is this doing? So this is how far in it goes. This is the the horizontal. It's it's horizontal, but it's not dimension. It's horizontal along the track. Okay. I don't know why that didn't like matter before. I, I tried playing with that value and nothing happened. You're all my witnesses, and I'm I'm counting on you to swear it. Okay. So this should tidy up that little pixel. Nice. I think that's looking pretty good. Oh, you know what? I'm, I'm, I hit play. It's not going to matter because we have... We, we're, this is just a, a random sequence that is not being called by anything, which is the next part of this tutorial. Okay. So let's go back to object player. Or object player. There he is. So we have object coin that we're colliding with. We're creating the instance of the coin collect effect. And then I assume we're going to need to add a sequence. Uh, so that's the diamond icon. Here we go, sequences. Create sequence. Yeah. Play sequence? Let's create sequence, coin, pickup. Um, relative to itself, on the assets, thing and do i need to change the target like i don't know why target is there let's see what happens it crashes perfect okay let's get rid of variable and let's see what happens because that was the line that was crashing it was with variable it was like saying uh taking a, a calculation and subtracting variable from it Okay, so we're still getting a crash. Could not find specified layer in current room. There's no assets layer in room one? Okay. What if we put it in the, I mean, I don't know. We, we can't put it in instances because it's not an object. We need some asset layer. I mean, let's just throw it in visuals. Let's see what happens. Hey, look at that. And that one isn't triggering because we're not colliding with it. Oh! <laughs> All right, well, this gives us a good opportunity to observe the behavior. Um, so the sequence never stops because <laughs> we said it's a loop. Um, and I'm pretty sure we could just change. I don't think we need to add any code for that. I think we just go to the sequence, the coin pickup, and we turn off loop, right? And that should fix it. Yep. Oh, there they go. <laughs> ah. 
So that's interesting. It's like reversing itself and then coming back. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. There we go. So there's loop. There's go back and forth and nothing. Okay. Let's try that again. <laughs> All right. Oh, get out of here, Mr. Mushroom. Okay. Feeling good. I... The feel of that is a little bit off. It feels like we should be like picking it up and then see it travel behind us, travel to the background in front of us, but it looks like we're picking it up and it's spawning relative to us. Almost. Um and if I wanted to take the time, I would definitely refine that to like push it out a little bit. So you pick it up and it flies out further. Maybe change the animation to push a little bit further out on that X. And then uh, um, maybe even moving the, the origin of it out a little bit. Not the origin, but, but where it's created. Okay, so I think we did it. Let's see what he said. Coin logic here. It uses the position, scale, and rotation parameters with a curve for the position. This should play when a coin is collected. So find an open D OBJ player object and here open its collision events with OBJ coin. In this event, let's add this to create a sequence in the game. It will create the new SEQ coin collect sequence at the position of the other instance, which is the coin. It will be created in our new sequences layer. Okay, so he made a sequences layer in the room. Path, tile. I don't think there's a sequences type of layer. So it'd probably just be an asset layer titled sequences. Oops. So if there is a room that has a coin object, it now needs to have this sequences layer. Otherwise, you'll get an error that the layer doesn't exist. Now in the game, whenever you collect a coin, you will see this animation. So you can create your own animations using any sprites or objects and play them at any time in your game. So go ahead and experiment with sequences. Watch this tutorial to- Cool. Looking at the way they did it, it looks like theirs doesn't necessarily get pushed out 